This didn't happen to me. However, I did witness this incident, and it creeps me out to this day. Back in junior high school, there was this popular kid named Ryan that used to bully me and tons of other people in our school. Ryan was the type of kid that thought he was the best in the world because he was the captain of the football team. The kid that bullied nerds and cheated on his girlfriends. Yeah, you know the type. Ryan's father ran an automotive parts store. His specialty was paint jobs and window tinting. He had many vehicles, but his favorite was a dark blue truck with orange and yellow flames on the front. It also had tinted windows and spinning hubcaps on the wheels. Ryan's father often wore the same team jersey as his son's team jersey, a red and white hat and blue jeans. As you continue listening, you will soon discover why the details of this particular truck as well as its owner, are very important. One day on my way to my next class, I fell down the stairs and sprained my ankle. I ended up limping to the nurse's office and calling my dad to come pick me up. After that, I sat in the waiting area looking out for my dad's car. About five minutes after I left the nurse's office, Ryan walked into the waiting area and sat down. Bored out of his mind, Ryan decided to talk to me while we were waiting for our dads to pick us up. I guess he felt safe talking to a nerd since his friends weren't around. So I begrudgingly decided to be polite with him and made small talk. About five or so minutes later, Ryan looked out the glass doors and saw his father's truck pulling into the entrance of the school. Ryan said, See you later, man, picked up his backpack and headed towards the glass doors. He was about to push the door open when he suddenly stopped and paused. When I asked him what was wrong, Ryan explained to me that his father usually picked him up later and that he usually parked his truck right next to the glass doors. Instead, Ryan's dad was 20 minutes early. The truck was next to the flagpoles, which were much farther away, and that the hubcaps appeared to be different and didn't even spin. After a few minutes of this, Ryan's cell phone then went off. Ryan at this point simply assumed that it was his dad calling and didn't pick it up. So he walked out of the door and headed towards the truck. I decided to take a nap while I waited for my own dad to pick me up. Suddenly, I heard what sounded like an older man yelling and Ryan screaming. I looked out the window, only to see Ryan flailing his arms and an older man trying to pull him into the truck. Because of my ankle, I couldn't run to Ryan's aid so I shouted to the nurse as well as some of the other staff members to get help. One of the nurses immediately started calling the police. A couple of secretaries ran towards the truck to help Ryan. Upon seeing the secretaries running towards him, the creep shoved Ryan away and climbed further into his truck. The guy then sped off and disappeared into the intersection that led into a nearby highway. Ryan at this point was crying in pain, mainly because the guy had pepper sprayed him. The secretaries helped poor Ryan to his feet and guided him to the nurse's office. About a few minutes later, the police, along with Ryan's real father, arrived. The police, as well as an ambulance, tended to Ryan while a couple of police officers interviewed me and the other witnesses. Because I was the only student that witnessed this, the police, as well as Ryan's dad, asked me to stay in touch and hang out with Ryan. 
just so that he could have a shoulder to lean on and recover emotionally. I did swallow my pride and gave Ryan my phone number. From that day forward, Ryan was a completely different person. The same person who used to body slam me into lockers was now in constant fear and used my body as a shield instead of a punching bag. There wasn't a day at school where Ryan wasn't around me. He was especially clingy and paranoid when it came to having his dad pick him up. I would have to hold his hand and stay there with him until his dad came around. It even got to the point that Ryan would call me every night to vent his fears as well as update me on what the police would find. And many of the details about this were very, very creepy. For instance, the creep, whoever he was, not only knew where Ryan went to school and where he got picked up, he even knew which vehicle Ryan's dad drove whenever he picked up his son from school. So he decided to imitate everything about Ryan's father. That's right, the creep actually went through the trouble of painting his own truck the same colors as his father's, just to fool and lure Ryan. He even started dressing up like Ryan's dad. Ryan even said to me that the disguise was so convincing that it wasn't until he looked at the creep in the eye that he realized that it wasn't his father. Yet, things got even creepier the more Ryan told me and the more the police department found. As it turns out, the creep also knew Ryan's cell phone number, but wasn't the one who called Ryan. Ryan told me that the police said that the mysterious number belonged to a payphone at a nearby gas station. So the creep in the truck couldn't have possibly called Ryan, meaning that not one, but two people might have been involved in this. Despite having video surveillance, a license plate, and a description of the driver, the police never found the guy or his gas station buddy. Even when the creep continued to terrorize Ryan and his father. About three months after the truck incident, Ryan called me in the middle of the night, this time in hysterics. Someone had thrown several Molotov cocktails at Ryan's house. A couple of them even hit and shattered a window and set part of his house on fire. About a month after the Molotov cocktails were thrown, someone, most likely the same creep, set fire to Ryan's father's business. The two of them moved out of the area not long after. The creep also disappeared, leaving everyone else to wonder just who the duo was. Was the creep a disgruntled parent of a student that Ryan bullied? Was he the enraged relative of one of Ryan's many ex-girlfriends? Was he a parent of a rival team member? Was he the dissatisfied customer of Ryan's father? Or was he just a random creep that liked to terrorize teenaged boys? The possibilities as who this guy was and why he, as well as his accomplice, would target Ryan were endless. With Ryan now gone, I quickly found myself getting very frightened over the possibility of the same duo going after me. For a long time, I was super paranoid about the creep going after me and subjecting me to even worse terror than Ryan had experienced. From that day forward, I refused to be picked up from school, no matter how sick or hurt I was. All because I feared that some creep was going to do the same thing to me. Even to this day, the whole incident sends shivers down my spine.